right let's do a small recap of what we're actually building so we are building an AI powered CV builder so as four features we have John Doe he is applying for a role as a front-end developer and he doesn't know how to write a good description you know he has all these skills he knows uh, JavaScript he knows TypeScript he knows Next.js he knows react but he doesn't really know how to sell himself he has experience he worked at google man google he was a front-end engineer and i designed the weather app man this guy knows his stuff he was there for for almost a month he's basically a gopher uh, he knows english he is basically proficient in it and he still doesn't know and if we were to generate a description for him he would have high chances and yeah especially working as a front-end engineer at google has honed my abilities to provide top-notch solutions keeping user experience at the forefront and delivering high quality scalable applications so this is going to be our project and this is what we're going to be building for the printing functionality it's nothing more simple than this it's literally window.print and we hide the sidebar when we're actually printing it and for this print headers and footers which we can just use the platform and things are gonna work yeah that easy all right this was it hey guys let's pick up from where we left off on the other video <clears throat> let's continue doing the multi-form input okay so why we need the multi-add input so we need it because we're gonna have links skills experiences educations and languages which are all going to be arrays where a user will want to add multiple items so for this we can just start creating a generic item and then we'll modify it as we go on so let's call it multi add input dot tsx it's gonna be a normal uh, functional component not like that we're using anything else so let's think about what we actually need for this so we're gonna need items so this is going to be let's do it like this type multi add input props and it's gonna be this so we're gonna want to have items but we don't really know what type th those items will be so let's make them any for now we're gonna have set items which <clears throat> is going to take items and it's not gonna return anything we're gonna have a create new item which again is going to return any for now and then we know we will have children because this is how we're going to render them but for now let's make them a react.react .react node and let's start taking care of this thing so we want to use a generic here so a generic is basically an argument in a type where we can actually add a type inside a type and this type is going to be t because we don't really know what it is now and now we know the items are gonna be T this is going to be T and then create a new item is gonna return another T and now 
we can have this but we will have to make it and it's going to be t extends unknown and we will have items set items create new item and children and let's return nothing for now now we know that we're going to be passing in those children and we know each each link and skills are gonna have a button to add new new item so now let's create the add item which is gonna be fairly simple so because we just need to set the items and we need to spread the current items and create a new item a function that we will pass into this then we know we're going to have an update item and this update item is going to take the ID which is going to be string is gonna take the value which for now let's leave it string and it's gonna take the name and because of this we can say const new items and we just need to map over the items and we see here the first problem we know the items that we're going to add are going to have an ID <clears throat> so except of this T extending unknown we need to create a type <clears throat> item with ID which is going to have an ID of string and instead of extending unknown we can extend this existing type all right and now let's take care of the easiest function which is going to be the delete item this one is only going to take the ID and then we just need to set items and then we'll do it in line items dot filter and let's say i i dot id not equals id whenever i get this one liners i usually just like to uh, shorten everything because it makes it a bit easier to read if i were to have uh, more logic in there maybe i'd leave it as an item and uh, then it makes it easier to read and debug but for this uh, i is perfectly fine uh, and now we need to see how the return is going to look like so the return is going to be a div and inside this div we want to map over the existing item and inside of it we want to use react.clone element and we want to pass in the children but we actually want to give them the item the update item and the delete item and then here as an extra argument we want to give them the key of the id and now we see that typescript is not really happy with us and this is because children are not really a react node and in our case children are actually a function that takes in three parameters and returns a react element so for this item is going to be t update item and delete item we already discussed them and it's going to return a react.react .react element and now 
TypeScript should be happy. And this is basically the generic item that we use for this. And the final thing that we want to use as well is we want to add a button and for this let's do an mpx shed cn ui latest add button and let's click yes this is gonna install the button component here and the radix ui slot because you can use the button as a child and then on the type of the button should be button and then on click should be add item and let's say add and let's remove this white spaces and we are good to go now we can start using it and abusing it and now let's actually test it out and see how it works so let's use the same sort of pattern that we used before just uh, now because we're gonna have this uh, multi-add inputs let's change a bit the formatting so we make it look a bit nicer so let's give it a space well if, of six let's do a p tag with the text slate of 200 and text to excel and let's call this one skills and now for our multi add input we're gonna need the following so we're gonna have the create a new item which uh, we talked about this being a math.random about this being a string but the problem is we can't really generate random numbers truly random and unique numbers and if we have two skills with the same key then uh, we're gonna have a lot of problems uh, because we're gonna be animating them as well and we're gonna be changing them and removing them based on id so we need to install pmpm PM, install actually it's add uuid and now we can have truly random ids because we will import v4 as uuid from uuid and let's see and i think i think typescript is a bit mad with me because we don't have the types for, for uuid so let's pmpm -pm add and now we have the types and TypeScript should be happy now. Perfect. And now we know that this is gonna be a new UUID and the name will be nothing. Let's remove this and self close it. Now, we're gonna need the items, which are gonna be cv.skills. For now, they're empty, so nothing will be there. We're gonna have set items, and we're just gonna take the skills, and then we're gonna set the cv, we're gonna spread the current cv, and then we're gonna add the skills. And then we will take Hello, I was a bit quick on the trigger with this self-closing thing. And now you know when we actually had this. Now we actually have the skill. We have update skill. 
and we have delete skill and we know that this is actually what we passed, passed in this function so these are the three arguments from our map that we are returning and now with this we can just do our regular inputs and regular stuff with it and we will do the following let's add this one a display flex and we know the uh, the input is going to have a type it's going to be text the name is actually going to be name and value will be skill dot name id will be skill dot id and on change we will we will update this skill dot id and now let's see if it works and let's add another one and another one and we can see our skills are updating and working as expected all right i will fast forward this part and i will come back with you after everything is up and ready all right now we only have one thing that's actually missing and that is the delete button for the delete button we will do the following we will import the button and we will give it a class name of minus margin left 14 because we want it to overlap the actual input and then we want to give it a variant of destructive so we want that red button again we want it to be type button and then on click we're gonna delete the skill with the id and for the icon we're gonna use the trash to icon and then we're gonna close the button tag and now we can see next to all of our skills we can see this button and then when we delete that item goes away now i'm not actually quite a big fan of how an item gets deleted or added so you see it's it just jumps away so to fix this uh, we're gonna install framer motion and then we're gonna do a little bit of magic with it first of all let's import motion from and github copilot is gonna do the rest motion from framer motion and then on this div we're gonna do the following we're gonna create this one to be a motion dim and then we want to give it an initial of opacity zero and then we want to give it an exit of opacity zero uh and we want to animate it to opacity one and inside and now you can see we still didn't really fix our exit issue and to fix this one we just need to wrap all this shebang into an animate presence animate presence is basically going to detect whenever uh, an item gets out of the frame a motion item and for this to work uh, you actually need to pass it this exit property if not it's not gonna work all right and uh, now what we need to do we need to give this thing a little bit of gap because right now it's atrocious and i think a space y of two it's going to do the job just fine and now we can add uh, items delete them and whatnot uh what else we should do is that we should really do a check to see if we should add a new item and to do that let's 
go into this multi add input and uh, should add item it's gonna be a boolean and then we're gonna import this one here as well and then should add item we're basically going to do the following I'm gonna do this in line so first if the CV scales length is zero then we're gonna return true and we need to change this one it's not going to be a boolean it's gonna be a function that returns a boolean all right and now here we have this function and in here we should call it inside the add item so if should add item and should add item then we can do this so now we can see because this skill is empty it's not gonna allow us to spam another one and because this one already is filled with something then it's gonna allow us and we're gonna repeat this sort of pattern for all of our components and I'm gonna speed up this process and this part and we're gonna talk about the end result All right, so uh, let's uh, go through all the changes that I've done. I've added support for languages, the same sort of pattern. I uh, uh, do the create a new item, which is basically the moment when I put the item as cv.languages, TypeScript knows that here in the create new item, it should expect this sort of stuff and the only problem is the, uh, my create new item was expecting a string and yeah uh, these are strings but they are a union and they only have to be those specific uh, styles so in order to keep it happy I just coerced it I probably could have done some fancy stuff with TypeScript but to be honest uh, I I don't feel it was the case and then again we do the should add item function and then uh, I've added the chat CN select component here and I pass it here all the proficiency so beginner intermediate advanced and proficient then with the experiences sort of a similar pattern just uh, the only thing that is different is that i installed and created a new component which is called the date picker width range date picker width range you can find it here on shed cn components you can just copy it and to install it you just need to install popover and calendar and that's going to install all the dependencies and then in here uh, on the on select I don't know if this is the right way to do this but if you don't have a range or a selected data then we return because nothing is there uh, if we don't have a range 2 then we set the date from this selected day 
two plus one day and we can use this function add days which is a function from date fns which is going to be installed automatically when you actually install uh, chat cn uh, popover and calendar and then if we don't have a range from and range to then we set the date to range and other than that education followed the same sort of pattern so it's not much different here the same sort of animations there's no new inputs here so uh, yeah i think this was everything that i wanted to cover with the multi ad input today uh, it's a great component you can basically reuse it anywhere uh, and probably there is a package somewhere out there but it's nice to actually understand how this uh, generic props and generic functions work to create this sort of component that's gonna be uh, really good and really reusable all right this was all from me hope you have a good one and i'll see you in the next one